Hi everyone, today I'm going to walk you through the most optimal way to prepare for the data science interview. After talking to hundreds of data scientists that have landed jobs at fan companies and other startups, I focused these steps into a simple action plan. In this video, we're going to focus on how to research the data science role, how to benchmark your skill set compared to others, and how to build a study plan. Eventually, this is all going to generate top-notch feedback for you to get better at data science. Step one, do your research on the data science role. Data science is a huge domain, and because of that inconsistency, setting the right topics for your interview is about half the battle. But somehow, I see candidates mess this up every time. They'll study machine learning concepts only to get slapped in the face with a business case question during their actual technical screen, or they'll actually review a ton of case studies only to be asked about matrix multiplication in NumPy. Preventing this mistake is usually easily avoidable with some diligence. To review, data science interviews consist of around 10 plus different interview topics. Ordered alphabetically, it's A-B testing and experimentation, algorithms and data structures, analytics questions, behavioral interview questions, business case questions, database design, machine learning questions, ML system design, probability, product metrics, Python, SQL or pandas questions, and then statistics questions. So given the wide breadth, how do you actually study everything? Well, actually you don't. And instead, if you actually have the interview scheduled, you should be emailing the recruiter and asking them what kind of questions will be on the interview. PSA, they actually wanna help you and see you succeed. And I cannot stress how easy and beneficial this task is, where at the worst case, they just tell you no. Best case, they tell you exactly what's gonna happen on the interview because they actually get paid when you get the job. Remember, the goal is to actually narrow the breadth of topics that you have to study, allowing you to go deeper into subjects that matter and be more well prepared. If you're not at the interview stage, you can actually start by preparing by just doing research, reading job descriptions and finding interview experiences from other candidates on blind or interview query. Look out for common subjects like if they talk about A-B testing or Python experience in the roles and responsibilities of these job descriptions. One thing we've done at My Company Interview Query is provide an exhaustive list of company guides where we've already gone through the analysis of which topics are asked for different roles. Uh, you can watch the video on how we did that here. Additionally, we'll put the link in the description below of all the company guides that you can browse through and there's definitely a ton. Step two is benchmarking your skill set. So once you've actually figured out which topics are going to be covered across all your different interviews, it's time to figure out your level of familiarity with those question topics. Do this first by just creating a list of question topics that will be asked in each interview that you're preparing for and order it by the most important across all the interviews. For example, if I'm studying for the Google and the Amazon data scientist interviews, I would first prioritize statistics and A-B testing questions, then data structures and algorithms, and then work on machine learning and then SQL next with some probability questions rounding it all up. You can see from these different kinds of interview topic graphs that this is what's actually gonna be asked the most for those interviews. And so start out by practicing a few different levels of these statistics interview questions to understand your knowledge. If you find yourself easily solving the easy and medium questions, then you should be confident and move on to another subject like the algorithms questions. You wanna focus a lot of your studying based on where you have the the least amount of knowledge. The goal is to have a list of question topics with your confidence level next to each one of them. This way you have an idea of which subject you need to spend the most time learning, practicing, and reviewing. For example, if you have high competency in A-B testing and you feel like you're okay on statistics and you don't know anything about SQL, then it's time to focus a lot of your studying across statistics and SQL. Step three, building a daily study plan. If you go to the gym, and if you experience no stimulus on your muscles, they won't grow. And if you step under 10,000 pounds, your body will break. Studying for the interview is very similar. We are in the business of building brain muscles to solve very specific problems to compound learning. This is especially crucial since practicing bite-sized interview questions on a continual basis allows you to level up slowly and build up an existing building blocks of knowledge. You can only solve medium level questions once you can ace easy questions, and you can only solve hard questions once you can easily ace medium level questions. Additionally, one thing we've learned is that the more problems you study, the more likely you are to actually pass the interview. This intuitively makes sense, but it's also backed up by data. We looked at exit survey data for members on interview query and saw a correlation in goal achievement and the number of questions studied. I'll add as a caveat, 
as a data scientist that this is slightly biased. You would expect candidates that study a lot of questions are probably more diligent in other areas of their interview preparation or life as well. But it's a good representation of how important maintaining effort is toward achieving success. And I'm not gonna lie, if anyone studied over 100 plus interview questions, you would think that they're probably gonna do well in their interview. It's definitely tough when most interview questions aren't fun enough to actually work on. I don't know about you, but I don't wake up brimming with excitement to solve linked list problems and also combinational dice roll probability questions. So building an interview study habit is easier than it sounds. My advice is to try two things. One is to make solving the questions actually easy. Most of the time, it takes putting in small steps. That's why it's important to start out by solving some easy questions first or just trying a few multiple choice questions. Maybe start doing five minutes of just thinking about a problem every day. The goal is to actually just build a habit and the best way to do so is to uh, actually make the first steps fairly easy. Then as you get used to the routine, you can steadily work out the difficulty in the problems that you're solving and the amount of time that you're putting into solving the data science questions. Number two is to give your inbox a nudge. Studies show that nudges towards your goals are great resources towards building positive habits. While companies like Facebook will send you notifications to get you addicted to Instagram, you can also do that with studying to actually help achieve your goals. For example, if you sign up for an interview query, it will send you exactly one question per week in your email. If you'd like to up that cadence to every single day, you can do that in your notification settings as well. Step four, getting interview feedback. It's really hard to grind and study without getting feedback. Continual feedback is what makes doing tasks much easier because we're getting recognition or insights into the work we're doing, instead of just feeling like it's a slog. So doing mock interviews and coaching is a great simulation for actually testing your live performance against another person. If that person is specifically a data science coach, they can dive into your process and explain exactly how you should be approaching the situation and the case study. Additionally, many interviews aren't like actual practice problems because they include problems that slowly build on top of your existing answers. So if you answer a case question on your own, it's a lot harder to dive in and actually solve that problem. So being forced to clarify the question and walk the interviews through different solutions, you build up mental practice to solve problems in real time. If you like more tips, please subscribe to my channel uh, like, and like this video. I hope that you guys can stick to these methods. I'm really rooting for you guys to do well in the interview. Uh, we have tons of more mock interviews, case studies on the channel, so please check it out and let me know how everything goes. Alright, bye!